How many days have passed since I last left the comfort of these dark, solitary chambers? This letter opener has been the sole focus of my attention for hours, perhaps days. But now I turn aside from this monotonous deliberation and direct my thoughts towards Berenice. Oh, Berenice, dear beloved Berenice, I call upon your name and from the gray ruins of memory a thousand tumultuous recollections are startled at the sound. Vividly is her image before me now, as in the early days of her lightheartedness and joy. But alas, it was not to last. During the brightest days of her unparalleled beauty, most surely, I had never loved her. In the strange anomaly of my existence, feelings with me are not of the heart, and my passions are of the mind. The realities of the world affect me as visions, and as visions only. All the wild ideas of the lands of dreams become, in turn, not the material of my everyday existence, but in very deed, utterly and solely, that existence itself. Through the earliest days of my youth she had, the did before my eyes. And I had seen her, not as the living and breathing Berenice, but as the Berenice of a dream, not as the being of the earth, earthly, but as the abstraction of such a feeling, not as a thing to admire, but to analyze, and not as the object of love, but the theme of the most obtruse, although desultory speculation. But now, now that the Berenice, as I knew her, has become a glittering object of the ebbing, evanescent past, and the Berenice of the present has been transformed into an abstract shadow of her former self. I find that she has become more morbidly real to me than she ever could have been before. A curse of disease! Oh, why did you strike my poor cousin? The spirit of change has swept over her, pervading her mind, her habits, her character, and in a manner the most subtle and terrible disturbing even the identity of her person. The advancement of her disease is of course the cause. The simultaneous advancement of my own disease. My monomania. I must so term it which aggravates my already irritable attention, finally culminating in a nervous intensity of interest which buries me in the contemplation of even the most common objects in the universe! What an interesting word. Jovial. Never before have I noticed the peculiar ring that accompanies of its the rhythm of its syllables. Jovial. 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 Hey, <laughs> I hope I'm not disturbing you, but... Oh, lamentable day. That I should shudder in her presence and grow pale at her very approach. Oh, I wish she would just go away! She horrifies me! The eyes have lost all of the energies that have previously been housed there. The once beautiful hair has withered and wilted. The warm blush that had once accompanied the cheeks has faded away. The lips are pale and thin. The teeth! They're perfect. 
spotless, pearly white with nary an indenture in their surface. The smooth contours of their edges arouse an awareness in me. An awareness I cannot even begin to embody with words. Dozed off. Mother, what a beautiful smile you have. Studied your portrait all these years, and until this arduous eve had not recognized what a beautiful smile. So perfect, brilliantly white. They remind me of. Oh no, 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 no. I can feel it setting in. To get my mind on something else, anything else! Full fury, and I struggle in vain against its strange and irresistible influence. The teeth, the teeth, there, here, and there, and, and everywhere, visibly and palpably before me, long, narrow, and excessively wide. I am <laughs> delirious with happiness. <laughs> Even in my most lucid states of this, I could have never dreamed. <sighs> Truly, this is not merely one of my spells. This is my spell. Their <laughs> possession alone can restore me to peace and give me back my reason. Teeth. Beautiful, long, narrow, white. <laughs> uh, dental. What sort of Sir, outrage is this that should disturb me so? Bernice is dead. What? Bernice. Dead? A wicked hour. I am undone. 